In this video, I'll show you how automated mapping with the QGIS Atlas tool works. It's really amazing, but if you've not done it before, it's quite difficult to understand the concept. So the first thing we need to do is add some data and we could add layers, but in this demonstration, I'm going to go down to the coordinate box at the bottom of QGIS, type in world in lowercase letters and hit enter. That will get us a world layer, but you can add any layer for this. The key thing is, when you're using QGIS Atlas is one single layer will drive the Atlas and you'll see how that works in a minute. So we've got our map layer. Let's change it stylistically in symbology. And I'm going to make the fill color, maybe a little green color, the outline. I'll drag and drop the color to the stroke. I'll change the width to 0 0.1. I'll click the stroke color patch and just make the outline a bit darker and I'll hit apply okay that looks fine so I've styled the layer let's now go to project and layouts or new print layout because we want to create a new print layout I'll just call this atlas the name does not matter you can call it whatever you like I'll click OK and then I've got an atlas well a blank page where I'm going to put my atlas stick with it and you'll see how it works so here I will usually right click the page and change the page properties if I want to change the page size. I'll do that now because I want my aspect ratio of my page to fill the screen. So if I make my page size 320 wide by 180 high, that's a 16 to nine aspect ratio and my maps will fill a screen when I export them. I'll just click on this button to view the full page and now I'm going to add my map via the add map button. I'm going to just click and drag to make this cover the whole page. The zoom level is okay but I want to move the map down a bit so this button move item content. I'll shift it down a bit. So that's fine and Remember the button for move item content will allow you to move. You can use a scroll wheel to zoom in and out. If I hold down control when I'm doing the scroll wheel on my mouse, then what happens is it does a finer zoom. You can also change the scale in the box on the right. So remember in print layout, make sure you're on the arrow to select or move items like that. And if you want to move things inside the frame, it's move item content. So this is positioned fine just now for demonstration purposes. I'm going to flick back to the map canvas. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the world map layer. So I'll right click it and I'll duplicate the layer. So I get a little warning. That's fine. Now this one, I'll double click it and I'm just going to change the fill color to a gray. Let's duplicate that gray for the stroke and let's make the outline of the copy layer a little bit darker. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. I'll turn that one on, turn the top one off. So we've got an under a layer underneath the green one and that's going to serve as our backdrop layer. I'm just going to make the fill color here a little bit lighter. and I'll make the stroke color a bit lighter than it was. A bit darker than that. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the print layout again. And the key thing here is the Atlas tab. Now, sometimes you don't see the Atlas tab by default. And if that's the case, you can go to the view menu and then go to panels and make sure Atlas is ticked. So in QGIS, the Atlas tool allows you to automate the map production process. You need to make sure you're on the Atlas tab and you tick the box that says generate an Atlas. And the Atlas is always driven or controlled by one layer and it's called the coverage layer. And we can choose any layer. We could choose a point layer, a line layer, a polygon layer. As long as it's a vector layer, it's okay. So I'm going to choose world map, not my copied layer to be the coverage layer. 
and then what happens is nothing. And you think, well, that's not very exciting. So we need to turn the Atlas on and we do that via the preview Atlas button. Still nothing happens, but that's because we need to change a few settings, but we do get a list of all the different countries from my particular country data set up here. And we see that because in the page name section on the right, we're choosing name as the page name. If we change it to something else, we would have something else up there. So some of these are just country codes. So if I turn the Atlas off and on again, we can see it's got country codes. But in this case, I want it to be name. And you'll notice in Atlas, sometimes in the layout as well, this happens where you change something and it doesn't appear to actually update. But with Atlas, sometimes you do have to turn it off and on again to see the changes reflected. Okay, so we're gonna add a rule now and we'll go back to the main map canvas to do it. I'm gonna add a rule to the world map layer. And what that will do is it'll make sure only one country is highlighted at a time. So I'll double click the world map player. So that's the green one, not the copied one. And in symbology, it's on single symbol. There's a number of options here, but we're gonna choose rule based. And this can be a bit confusing, but the only thing you really need to do is find where it says no filter and double click it. And then we're gonna enter a rule into the filter section I recommend not typing this manually because it's easy to make mistakes. So instead, click on the little expression button. And here, the expression that we use to make sure that only one country appears at a time is as follows. It's dollar sign ID equals, and then we do an at sign and start typing the word Atlas. And as I do that, you'll see it will auto complete and it'll give me options. There we go. So it's Atlas feature ID we want to use. So what's happening is we're telling QGIS to only display a country if it matches the current Atlas feature ID. It can be quite confusing until you see the results. So that's the correct expression. I'll click OK and then OK. Now when I click apply, all but one of these countries will disappear if I have my Atlas on in the print layout. See, Norway is the only one that's left. So I'll click OK, and I'll go back to my print layout. And again, like I said, sometimes you need to refresh. So I'll hit refresh, and Norway's displaying. So what Atlas does, it allows us to iterate through row by row on our coverage layer. And because we applied that rule, it's only going to show one country at a time. And towards the top of the screen, if I click Next Feature, it will show Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, Russia, and we can go back to the start. Now we start getting a bit more fancy. Let's add some text. So if I go to the add label button and at the top, let me make a box that fills the whole width of the screen. Let me go over to the item properties for that box on the right. I'll delete the, the default lorem ipsum text. I'll go to insert or edit expression. And in this section, it can again, it can be a bit confusing, but we're looking for fields and values here because this is all the columns in our data set. In this case, in the Atlas tool, it's just a countries layer and that's our coverage layer. It's got a name column. So instead of entering a name like the name of the country, we're entering the column because QGIS is then going to enter the name it finds in that column as we go through the Atlas. You'll see how this works. I'll click OK probably can't quite see the font so I'll increase the size to 36 let me just use Arial and make it bold and I'll just go back there and I will center that text and also put it in the middle so now what's happening if I go up there's an expression in here and it's pulling in the name of the country from the name column now when I go through the atlas it displays country name and it shows you what it is now if I go I can do this you know I can scroll through the whole world but that's how it works you can pull in anything from the coverage layer so this name of the country Brazil it's in I'll show you in a second it's in the attribute table for the layer so there's the name column with the country names 
and QGIS Atlas is just pulling that name in on each page because we've used an expression. So let's see how we would get this out. Now in QGIS from the print layout, you can always just export a single page by clicking on the export as image button or SVG or PDF. But if we want to export all features from the Atlas, we can go to Atlas and then, hold on a second, Atlas, export Atlas as images. I will just pause there for a second. There we are. So I have chosen a folder which I want to save my Atlas pages into and I'll click select folder. Then we get the option to change the export resolution. So if I click save now, it's going to export images 300 DPI and it will do them all. So let me just change this to 100 DPI because I don't want the images to be such high resolution for this little test example. And when I click save, it's going to start exporting these images. And I'll hit save and then I'll pause so you don't have to watch the whole thing export, but it should be quite quick. There you go. You can see it's exporting individual country maps. My computer is pretty powerful. It's quite fast, but the more data you have and the more complex your atlas is, the longer it will take. So I'll pause this for a second. Okay, it's finished. And we get a little link to show where the finished images are. So I'm going to click this. Let me pull that folder in. And we can see we've got all our output. So let me just click on this one here, output 61. And that's Australia. And we've got Egypt. And we've got Democratic Republic of Congo. So it's given us a map for each individual country, which is great. But one thing that's not great is the name of the files because it's hard to tell which country is which. Yeah, sure, we can see this, this one's Brazil because Brazil is a big country, but it's quite hard to see some others. So let me just delete all these outputs and move that over there. And let's show you how you can go to the Atlas tab and in the output file name expression box, I can untick single file export when possible and delete the text that's in there and hit the expression button. Because what I want here is I want to make sure the file name is the name of the country in the image. And to do that, once again, I can go to fields and values and name. And some countries actually don't have a name in them in this data set which can cause problems. I'm just going to do another little thing for formatting. I am going to change it to make sure the name is all lower case. So I want my output file names to be using all lowercase letters. The other thing is I want to make sure I replace any spaces in a country name with an underscore. So to do that, I can type in replace before the name variable and then I'll put a comma after name, single quotes with a space between them. So that tells QGIS to replace any spaces with two single quotes together. Sorry, two single quotes with an underscore. And then I'll close the brackets. And you'll see this in the description for the video. But here's an example. We've got British Indian Ocean Territory has got underscores in it. British Virgin Islands has got underscores and no spaces and it's all lowercase. So let's see how we get on now. If I go to OK, Atlas, export Atlas as images. This time though, um, it should have nicely formatted file names. So let's do this again. And at the stage we're doing this, we want to select a folder, remember, to save the images in. I'll just do 100 DPI again. So the dots per inch resolution is only 100 but you can do it higher. If you do a higher resolution, it will take longer to export. So let me hit save on this. And again, it's exporting. I'll pause it while it's exporting. In this case, you can see it is making pretty quick progress. So we're producing 240 maps and 
the total time for this on my computer is a couple of minutes. So it's not very slow. So we're almost at the end, all 240 maps. We get a export atlas green bar, pop up at the top, click on that. Let's pull in our atlas example folder. And what we see is we've got the files again, but instead of being named output one, output two, and so on, we have the name of the country in the file name. So if I go to, let's look at a couple, Namibia. So we could tell by the file name, which it is. Let's go to Rwanda. Yep, it's always good to check your file outputs just to make sure they all look correct. And if we go and do one more, let's choose Vietnam. Okay, that's fine. So that's an introduction to QGIS Atlas tool. In this example, the map stays at the same zoom level, as you can see. And we're just highlighting different countries as we iterate through the map. There's one other important option you can use, and that is to make the Atlas zoom to individual features as it goes through. So the, to do that, I'll, I'll make sure I'm on the arrow tool on the left. I'll select the map, and then I want to go over to the right, but this time not to the Atlas tool, but to item properties. And you just need to scroll down an item properties until you see controlled by Atlas. I'll expand that first so you can see the options, but controlled by Atlas will zoom to individual countries. The only thing I would say here is sometimes in the case of like Norway, when a country's got territories that belong to it that are really far away, like in the case of Norway or some other countries, it will zoom to the country, but the zoom level will look weird. So it just depends if you've got a data set like I have here using the default world layer, there's a few weird quirks in it. So I'll go to Sweden instead. And it zooms to Sweden. But I think for me, it's a little bit too zoomed in. So the margin around feature at 10%, I'll change that to 50. Yeah, I like that better. You could also use a predefined scale, but that's only really useful when all your things are the same size. So countries vary a lot in size. So I'm using a margin around the feature. Um, you could also use a fixed scale. So there's two options there. It's best just to experiment. But if I used a fixed scale, and then did that, it just looks weird. It doesn't make sense. So I need to use margin around feature generally when I'm using the country layer. Again, the Netherlands is an interesting one because it does have some territories far away from it, which is why the zoom level is weird. But like in most countries in this data set, it just zooms straight to the country. So if you want to do it zooming to individual countries, you just need to go select the map, item properties, and then use this controlled by Atlas tool. And the export is exactly the same. You go to Atlas, export Atlas as images, SVG, PDF. When I go to export Atlas as images and I select a folder, then I can do exactly the same thing. If you just want to select the single page and export it, just use export as image or export as SVG or export as PDF. And that is how QGIS Atlas works, how you can automate your mapping workflow. The text here, Japan, is being pulled in from the attribute table for the layer. The layer in the Atlas that we use is called a coverage layer. And you can pull in any data or any fields in the coverage layer and put it on your print layout. So hopefully, if you've been experimenting with the Atlas and QGIS, or you just didn't know how it works, or you never even heard of it, this will really help you in your work and it can make you massively more productive and it's really, really useful. And remember the tip about the output file name because otherwise all your files by default will be called things like output one, output two, output three, and so on, which may not matter, but I find it much more useful to have a meaningful file name so that I know what is in each file. Thanks for watching.